What up, y'all? It's your man, Mr. Ms. Cool Cat County YouTube representing the Birds. Nick Seriani press conference starts today, right now. We're going to watch it. We're going to analyze it. We're going to learn it, love it, live it, hear what he got to say. And then I'll give my thoughts on it afterwards. Okay? Boom. The press conference starts now. The Eagles to Philadelphia to the best fan base in America, and uh, I, I wish him all the best. Can't wait for him to get. You know, he's already gotten started, and uh, I think you're going to really uh, you know, enjoy what he uh, provides uh, as a person, as a coach, and as someone to uh, get to know. With that, Nick. Uh, Look forward to your opening remarks and any questions for Nick. And thank you all again for virtually attending today. Thanks, Jeffrey. Coach, welcome to Philadelphia. We'll get started with your opening remarks, and then we'll go ahead and open it up to uh, questions. First of all, I'd just like to thank Mr. Lori um, for believing in me to run, to be in charge of this unbelievable uh, football team and this unbelievable organization in this great city. Um, the, the fans, right? I can't wait. I, I, I know from experience, I know from experience of coming here and playing here as an opposing coach, how passionate, how, um, the, how passionate that the fans are here in Philadelphia. And I, I'm just glad you're on, we're on the same team now. We're on, you're on my side now. Um, thank you to Howie Roseman. I can't wait. I can't wait to work side by side with you uh, in, in efforts to bring another championship uh, back to the city of Philadelphia. It's been a great uh, working with you so far, and look look forward to the continuing that that relationship. Thank you to to Don Slowinski, all right, and the rest of the people around this organization. It's just it was very apparent to me right from the beginning, uh, like Mr. Lori said, with the interview process of how great. The people are in this organization it's a special group of people it's a special group of people and and you can feel that right away so just just can't wait to get started to start working with all of them thank you to the indianapolis colts thank you to the ursay family thank you to chris ballard um, and then most importantly thank you to my friend my mentor and like my big brother frank wright uh, they believed in me. They gave me a chance to be their offensive coordinator, and I'm forever grateful for them for that. Um, I'd like to thank my beautiful wife, Brett, and, and our kids, Jacob, Taylor, and Miles, for your unending support, for your consistency, your steadiness through the ups and downs of the season. Uh, just, just thank you. Thank you for your just continuous support of me and lo unconditional love. I love you guys. Thank you, thank you to my mom and dad. Thank you to my mom and dad for, I just, I just have two wonderful parents that, that care about me, that have been there for me for everything, that have been to every sporting event that I've ever been a part of. Um, had season tickets in Indianapolis when they live in Jamestown, New York. I'm quite positive they'll have season tickets here in, in Philadelphia. Just thank you for the example that you've given me to be uh, the, the type of person I wanna be. I can't thank you guys enough for that. I'd like to thank my brothers. I've always looked up to my brothers, both Mike and Jay. I've always looked up to them. And again, just I have two older brothers that are, are football coaches, right? That are football coaches. So looked up to them in many ways. They're older than me, looked up to them in many ways. And what an example that they've given me as well um, that, I've, that I've tried to follow and make them proud of me. <clears throat> I'd like to thank all the coaches all right, all the coaches that have helped shape me to the coach I am today. You know, you, you take a little bit of each coach that you've been around, right? You take a little bit of each coach that you've been around and you make, and you make yourself out of that. You, you take the good, you take the bad, and you, and you, and you make the, the best out of, you make the, the best out of you from those people. So thank you for believing in me. Thank you for teaching me. And thank you for just always being there for me. The coaches I'd like to thank, and I know I'll leave some out, but I, I need to thank these people first. My dad was my coach, so I thank him. Larry Karras, one of the, uh, at Mount Union College, my college coach. Thank him. Todd Haley, Romeo Cornell, Brian Dayball, Ken Wisenhunt, Mike McCoy, Anthony Lynn, and Frank Wright. 
and again, and many more that I, that I know I can't mention all. It's I, but all these guys have shaped me to to where I am today. And it's all about the players. It's all about the players, and I've been blessed to be around some unbelievable football players that I've built great relationships with, that I've went through battles with, and 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 went through the ups and downs of the season. I mean, it, it, it's that's a special relationship that you're able to build with a player and a coach, and I value that. And so I just like to, to mention a couple of them. Um, and I know I'll, I'll leave some out again, but Philip Rivers, Keenan Allen, Dontrell Inman, Tyrell Williams, Zach Paschal, T.Y. Hilton, Jacoby Brissett, Andrew Luck, Jack Doyle, Naheem Hines, Danny Woodhead, Ryan Kelly, and Quentin Nelson. It's been great just to get to know these guys and be in that room and be in the battle with them every single day. Uh, and I can't wait to build those same relationships with the players here in Philadelphia. I'm just so excited to be here. With a great, I, I mentioned, it's just such a great support staff here, the people in place here, the great, a great culture that Mr. Lori uh, mentioned. It's just, it's just a wonderful organization. It's a first class organization. And I just look to continue to build on that culture that they have here. The core values that I believe in that are important to any good team that I really want to make sure that we that we have here, all right, with, with the Philadelphia Eagles are one the one is to connect with each other. All right, connect with each other. That's so important to me is that we, we have a we have a building here where everyone's connecting. Coaches are connecting to coaches. Players are connecting to players. Um, and coaches are connecting to players. All right. When you have that connection, when you build these connections, right, you, you end up you'll end up pushing a little bit harder for someone that you know and someone that you care for and someone that you love. And that's what we want to try to develop. And I get to be a part of a team. All of us, everybody in this building, we're a part of a team. I'm 39 years old. I'm a part of a team. That's unbelievable, right? And it, and we all should feel so lucky to be a part of that team. And that's and when you can get that connection, that's a special part of. The, of an organization, a special part of a, uh, of a team, and all the best teams that I've ever been a part of had that connection, so look forward, forward to doing that with the, with the people here in Philadelphia. I think uh, the other thing that's important to me is that we compete every single day. We compete every single day, just like it's important, just like it's important to practice a play to get good at that play so you can run into the game. It's important to practice competing, right? It's important to practice competing. The, the parity in this league is so tight, all right? It's so tight. Every game comes down to a one-score one game. We have, to, we have to pour that into our DNA here in Philadelphia, right? In the meeting room, it's important that we meet or compete. In the, on the field and also off the field, we're constantly going to be competing with each other. The next thing that's important to me and part of, of my core values is accountability, right? We have to set the standard early. We have to set our standard early of what's acceptable and unacceptable on the field. And what we and what we need to do to get better, right? And so that's my job, right? That's my job to set that standard with with the coaches. And then when you really are cooking, the the players are holding the players accountable, with, and and everybody's holding each other accountable, all right? But accountability. Next thing that's very important to me is that we build a smart football team. That we have a smart football team here, and I know we have the the people in place to do that. The first part of that, the first part of being smart is knowing what to do. We're going to we're going to know we're going to have systems in place that are easier to learn. All right, complicated to the defense or offense that they're going against or the special teams group they're going against, but easy for us to learn. Because when we can put that because we when we can learn our system and we can get good at our system, then our talent can take over. Less thinking equals talent take over, but we need to have systems in place, and we will have systems in place to do so. The other thing that's, that, that is, that's highly important for a smart football team is game management and situational, situational ball. Uh, I was just up in my office the other day, and I was showing a couple coaches that, that haven't been around in a couple years of a video clip that I like to show to the team about how important situational, situational ball is and how important those things are. And I showed him the clip of Villanova in the national championship game in 2016. And when they, when they drove down the court and against North Carolina and they, and they kicked it back and they made the three. And they were interviewing the players after the game. And they were interviewing the players after the game. And, and the, one of the players said, 
And that we have been through that situation so many times, over and over and over again. Coach Wright has put us in that situation over and over and over again. We were ready for anything that the defense threw at us. We were ready for anything that they threw at us. And we, and we ended up, and we, and we made the shot because we put ourselves in that situation and we were smart situationally. And that's our job here all right, with the Eagles to make sure that we go through all of those situations with them and, become, and create a good, smart football team. And lastly, as far as a core value to my, of mine is fundamentals. Being good at the fundamentals. Winning your one-on-one -on -one matchup because you won that matchup with fundamentals. Right, because when, when you're playing this game, the par again, the parity is so tight in the NFL. You have one player that's just as good as this player, and one coach is gonna call a good play, and this coach is gonna call a good play. So what gives there? Fundamentals, all right, being good, that, and that's how we develop players, getting them good at the fundamentals that it takes for that player to be good at his position. And I, and I, I, I remember a quote, you know, I like to study, study great, um, great players and great athletes and great coaches. And Kobe, uh, Kobe Bryant is one, one person I'd love to study more than anybody. And he talked about how, the, yes, he was extremely talented, but at the core of his game was the fundamentals. And when you can combine the fundamentals and you combine that with the talent, that's when you get, uh, that's when you get a player to reach the level of, of excellence. And, that's what we, and those are the core values that I'd like to bring here and build upon here of the Philadelphia Eagles. And with that, I'd like to open that up uh, to questions. Hey, let's uh, go ahead and get started with Zach Berman and then Dave Zangaro. Hey, Nick, uh, could you take this job with the stipulation or the expectation that Carson Wentz is your quarterback next season? And if so, what's your plan to get the most out of him? Well, you know, I, t I took this job because what a great organization this is. And the, the, the plan here is that I, we have to go through a lot of things here. We're getting our, our, our coaching staff in place. We're getting it in place so we can get the best people in here as coaches. And what we need to do is evaluate the entire roster. We, we, have, we have a lot of things to go through with these next couple weeks of evaluating the entire roster in, in every position quarterback, wide receiver, defensive back, we're, that, that is what we're, that is what we're going to be diving into here. And, and it's, it's great. I mean, we have, we have two quarterbacks in Carson Wentz and, and Jalen Hurts that are top notch, that are top notch quarterbacks. And a lot of teams don't have any. And so just excited, just really excited to work with both of them. Hey, James and girl, and then Mike Chet. And then kind of to, to follow up on that, uh, there have been plenty of reports about Carson's relationship with the organization being strained. Wondering what your conversations with him have been like so far, and do you feel like it's a reconcilable relationship? Yeah, I, I can't I can't speak on that, uh, Dave. I, I've talked to Carson. I've talked to I've talked to all, I've been reaching out to our players. It's been a whirlwind, obviously, so far as far as. You know, just the amount of things to do to, to, as we as I took this job and, and a week into this job, but trying to communicate with all our players uh, as quickly as as quickly as I can. Uh, I've, I've talked to Carson. We've had good conversations and or good conversation. I know he's talked to our offensive coordinator as well. And you know, just excited again, just excited to work with him uh, as we move here forward. And Mike K and then Tim McManus. Nick, what went into hiring Jonathan Gannon, and why is he? The, the right hire for defensive coordinator? Well, you know, I've been with Jonathan for the last three years. So you can you can almost say that, you know, he's been on he's been on an interview with me for three years. But I think that his football IQ is is off the charts. When I want to know something about a defense, all right, when, for the last three years, if I wanted to know something about a defense, he's the first one I've went to. He's the first one I've went to every single time. Hey, tell me how they're doing this. His, his football IQ, IQ is off the charts. His players play well for him, all right? His players love him and his energy is contagious. His energy is contagious. He, he loves football. He loves football. He loves being around football. He loves being on the practice field. He loves being in the meeting room. Tireless worker who I believe in, I, I, that I truly believe in, in, in his organization skills to be a, a very good defensive coordinator in the NFL. Hey, Tim McManus and then Ruben Friend. 
And uh, Kevin, have you spoken to Jalen Hurts as well? And what is has your message been uh, to the respective quarterbacks? Yes, I've also spoke to Jalen. Um, again, I will I'll keep our conversations um, uh, private. Just you know, those are conversations between uh, the player and I. Um, but same conversation with him is that I'm really excited to work with him. He's, he had a great, I mean, we studied him last year, had a great college day. He played meaningful snaps this year that, that he played well on. So, well, and so, you know, the conversation with him and the conversation with the guys that I've had is, you know, really excited to start working with you. Really, really this, like excited to work with you. And the co- most of the conversation is getting to know the individual um, besides football. I'm gonna learn a lot about him in football. I know I'm gonna learn a lot about him in football in this next week. But I wanted to know a little bit more about each each player that I've talked to personally, right? And then when I look at the tape, and I and I look forward to this looking at the tape of being honest and having honest and open conversations with each one of them of what I saw on the tape and how we can improve, all of us improve. Hey, Ruben Frank, and then Kristen Roger. Hey, Nick, welcome to Philadelphia. Um, uh, knowing what you know about the roster, what you know about the franchise, what you know about the team, what's your personal timetable as far as when you can win, when you can be a playoff team? How long will it take? You know, that, that we have to, again, we have to continue to, we have to go through the process here. We have to go through the process here. We're still, we're still in phase, the first part of this phase of, of getting the right coaches in place to come in and coach the guys, right? To, to that their their core values line up with my core values, right? And and they're good teachers of fundamentals. So we're in that phase right now, right? Then it goes to evaluating the roster. But you know this 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 team and this this city and this organization, I'm I'm confident this this is a really ta- there's a talented group. Uh, Howie Howie and his staff have put together a talented group, and just super excited to work with each all the guys here. Because I know there's a lot of talent in this building. Okay, Kristen Rogers and then Jeff McClain. Hi, Nick. Welcome to Philadelphia. Can you walk us through your offensive philosophy and what it's going to be like as you take this step into play caller? Yes, yeah, great question. The, the the offensive philosophy again. This goes to we're we're going to be multiple. Of, we we can attack multiple ways, and, I, and I'll just use the the example here from Indianapolis, right? We had Andrew Luck as our quarterback. That followed up with Jacoby Brissett as our quarterback. And then that followed up with Phillip Rivers as our quarterback, right? And and those those three those three teams looked different. They were all different in their own ways of, of how we attack defenses and how we play played the game. And I think I think that's the, the sign of a, a good coach that you're gonna that you're gonna change based off of your personnel, right? We have a certain personnel in place we're going to figure out what they can do well and and how and what their strengths are and we're going to play to their strengths and we're going to try to keep them out of situations that they don't excel well excel well at and so that's an that's a and that can change you know we we can look at the tape right we can look at the tape and think about hey well this would look really good this is how he fits a couple things that we've done in the past all right but that could change based off of practice and practice say okay maybe we're going to have to we're going to have to see it in practice and then that could change based off a of game. So it's an ever uh, changing uh, offensive philosophy. Sure, we have our four plays in place that we want to do and that we want to be good at um, because that's that's what we do. But a lot of it, a lot of it is going to depend on our personnel and utilizing our personnel to, to their strengths and their weaknesses. Hey, Jeff McLean and then Elliot Short Parks. Uh, Nick, you said that uh, you have two top-notch quarterbacks in Carson Wentz and Jalen Hurts. So does that mean that there will be an open competition at quarterback if they both return? Again, that that's something that we have to uh, look at, look at the value, evaluate, and I'm not ready to say that either way yet. We're we're just evaluating our players, evaluating every position, and and every position, right? We don't, I don't, we don't know any of these guys really yet. Uh, from what we've seen on tape so far, because we haven't, we haven't watched any. So every position that is going to be evaluated and every position is going to be, you know, open, I guess to say, and we're, we're, we can't wait to, again, can't wait to start watching the tape and, and seeing what our players can do. Elliot Short Parks and then Paul Donovich. Nick, have you had a chance to look at the receivers on the roster from last year? Uh, what are your thoughts on them? And specifically, how do you see Jalen Rager uh, in your offense? 
So again, no, ha haven't seen, a, know the players, you know, know the players more so on the sense of, um, you know, what you see on you know, opposing teams film. And there's not uh, the tape that I've seen in the past three years. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna end it here because I'm gonna finish watching. But I love what he said. He's, I love what he said. And I'll give my thoughts on what he said in another video, okay? Because I gotta go. Fly, go fly.